Um, we're going to start our program tonight with the Pledge to the Flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Okay, and tonight our speaker will be Brent Labenberg, who is president of the Emmaus Council. <clears throat> he's been on council for 18 years, and he's on the... He was on the Building and Finance Committee and Parks and Recreation Committee and uh, the General Administration Committee. He also was a former member of SEPTA serving on the Fundraising Committee. So welcome Brent Leibenberg. Hello everyone. It's been a while since I've been at SEPTA. Um, my roots are with Otto, starting here at SEPTA, and my political career would never have started if it wasn't for Otto, so um, I'm being directed over here. Yep, like in the middle there. Um, I'll give you a little background about myself because I, I see some new faces here. Um, I'm married 21 years, I've lived in Emmaus all my life. I'm, fourth or fifth, gener fifth generation, my kids are sixth generation, living in Emmaus. And um, I have three kids, they're all in college now. Not good on the budget, I can tell you that. And uh, thank God my one son's going to community college. <laughs> um, uh, my, uh, well, we homeschooled our kids. Um, my wife did it through eighth grade and then they still stayed at home and did uh, Pennsylvania Virtual Charter School where they all graduated. Uh, my daughter graduated at 16. She was in a special program where she skipped a grade. Um, that's Delena, my, my second youngest son, or the middle child, with graduated at 17. He um, is at Elizabethtown College. He's majoring in engineering. He's on the track and field team there. And uh, he just got nominated for a prestigious writing award for English, which I never knew he had that talent. And also nominated by a prof professor for um, his engineering uh, for a solar project on the, on the campus. So all, all kinds of good things happening for him. My daughter's a, at a photography school down in uh, Philadelphia, Antonelli Institute. It's a two-year college and um, also expensive. And uh, she's doing really well there. Um, and then my oldest son, Drew, is at Lehigh Community College, uh, going for two different associate's degrees. One is um, uh, environmental science, and the second one is GIS, which is a program that is a, involves computers. Um, so I'm quite proud of them, and uh, my wife is now working full time now that she's not home, at home with the, the kids, so she's helping to pay for college too. Um, so that's my background as far as my family. Um, as far as broke council, like I said, I got elected with Otto uh, back in 19, was it 96 the first year? 96? Uh, 1906. <laughs> so we got elected in 95, and I, I actually got elected before my first son was born, and uh, he was born right before I got sworn in. So. Um, Otto and I served four years. We cut taxes three out of four years. Uh, we pissed a lot of people off because of how we handled that, I guess, and then uh, got voted out of office. We were out two years, and then uh, I ran again. I was fortunate enough to get my name on both uh, ballots, the Republican and, and the Democrats, and out of the seven candidates, I was um, uh, number one vote getter probably because of that, but, um, and I've been on council ever since. Um, as far as all the committees I've been on, I've been on every committee, I believe, except for the safety committee. I've never been on a safety committee. Um, I'm currently council president. Uh, this is my first term. I, I uh, got a point, or voted on 
council president in January, this January. So it's a two-year term. And um, the reason I didn't go for it before is because of the kids being at home. I was coaching basketball, helping out with football, um, going all their, to their um, sporting events. So it took a lot of time. And you all know as a parent, you want to be there for your kids. So now that they're in college, I have the time to do it and stepped up to do that. Um, I guess one of the reasons I'm here is to explain the, the move into the Rodale building and then also updates on a couple other things that are going on in the borough. Um, we recently had, uh, I believe it's USA Architects, work with us over, I'm going to say it was over a four month period where we met pretty much tw twice a month with all the department heads, um, including um, staff, not just, not just the department heads, but staff in each department. Um, and we would go through and tell them what we were looking for. And then eventually they gave us conceptual plans, like four different plans. And then we would um, discuss the pros and cons of each one and, and narrow it down. And we eventually combined a couple of those plans. And once we did that, then we went to the, where are we putting each department? Um, then each department, what do they need in each department? And we did that. And each meeting, we fine, basically fine-tuned everything. And um, the biggest changes were in the police department. Um, some issues were they're going to have a drive through Sally Port. And when they, um, the original plan had um, where the Sally Port came out, they had to go down a ramp and then go, go a little bit. And it was like maybe 60 feet. We didn't think much of it, uh, but they thought that was an issue. When you have somebody that's combative or anything like that who is not cooperative, you want to make sure that you can get them right to where you want to get them right away. It's less chance of injury to your police officers, less chances of anyone having an incident as far as... Um, complaints or, or whatnot, but uh, so they made adjustments for as soon as they come in the door, boom, right there is the holding cell. Um, issues like you can't have a juvenile cell next to an adult cell because they're not allowed to hear what's going on with the, um, the adults. They have to be separated. So things like that were all taken care of in the fine tuning. Um, and I'll show you some of the, the uh, pictures and stuff that of the uh, actual building, when it, the way it's going to be. Um, the original plan was to do this in three phases, but after seeing the cost and what was involved, we ended up going with five or six phases. I'll, I'll actually even say seven phases. Uh, one of the phases we want to do is um, convert the whole building to natural gas, because obviously it's a lot uh, more efficient and, and inexpensive, but there is, I think we have to run a line like 200 feet just to get to the building, and, um, and then you have to do the conversion. But um, that would be what I consider one of the phases, or it could be incorporated into one of the phases. But um, that's down the road. The first phase is going to be moving Burl Hall in the, into the um, what I, what I would say, the middle part of the building. Currently, I, I'll tell you this too, at the west end of the building, the seventh generation is currently leasing the building. We are receiving about $165,000 from the, the lease. That alone pays for the mortgage. So if we didn't do a thing, that would pay for the mortgage. It wouldn't, we wouldn't have to pay a penny from the budget towards that. Um, what we need the money for is the converting it into a movable place where each department can go in. So um, they are in negotiations with us to rent another 4,000 square feet. So we're estimating that maybe, maybe we get $200,000 for the lease. So not only will it cover the mortgage, but it will help us with the further funding of um, the conversion. The the, along with the Rodale property came a house that's next to it. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of this. If you're looking at it from 
uh, Minor Street, there's actually a house on the left side, a stone house. It's right above the 1803 house. Um, that came with the, the deal, and we um, are leasing that out at $1,000 a month, so that's another $12,000 uh, of income. And across the street is a parking lot that holds maybe 45, 60 cars, which is where the Yakos headquarters is. Uh, we also got that with the deal. The intent is to move Burrow Hall in first, then sell Burrow Hall. Um, the, uh, we have a, a house, a building, it's not really a house. It was converted into a gym that the police officers currently use. It's been there a very long time. It's in the uh, left field of the ball field at Central Fire Station, which is known as Lions Playground. Um, that will be moved into the new building and sold. The value of that is not very much. I think, believe it's like $60,000. And we own property on 2nd Street Mountain, up above Unami. It's not actually in the borough. Um, I'm not quite sure how many acres it is, but it's, it's double digits. It's over 10 acres. And we're going to be selling that. Now, there is talks of maybe the Wildlands Conservancy buying it to pres preserve the land. Because it is on, a, on the slope of the mountain, there's really not much development that could go in there. Maybe one or two houses at the most. I think if somebody were to purchase that privately, they might want to have it for deer hunting or hunting in general. Um, but that is um, something that would be sold. We currently own 48 properties in the borough. They're borough owned. Um, the intention is to sell six of those properties eventually, so we would only have 41 properties. Um, so, uh, and then the parking lot along Jubilee Street, there's actually two parcels there that would be sold also. Um, and then of course the police station and the central fire station, those are the seven properties. We actually own a, a little sliver of land in Country Heights which is on the west side of Mace. It's a little triangle, and it could probably put one house on it, but we just discovered that within the last three years that we actually owned that. We had a, did an inventory of borough properties. Um, we're holding on to that, though, because right behind that is a farm where the same developer that is doing the Indian fields is talking about putting a development in there. So. Um, we're kind of holding on to that to see if maybe we can have some influence on what direction that goes, meaning not to have as much de development. Um, all right, so going to the, moving into the um, Borough Hall. Borough Hall is going to go in the center of the building and go, the entrance will be on the Minor Street side. Um, I'm going to hold this up to see if you can see this, but this is where the current, um, this white part is the current spot where the seventh generation is. So that's, hmm? Yes. Um, this yellow part, part here will be the new Burrow Hall on the first floor. Now this section of the building is actually two stories. so. When you go in there, you'll be able to pay your taxes. The tax um, collector will be there, then schoolie's office. Um, you'll be able to go pay your, your water bill, your garbage bill, uh, garden plots if you're running them. You'll be able to go pay your ambulance subscription. You'll be able to go there for anything to do with um, a bill that you might receive from the ambulance or even the fire department, but that's rare that you get a bill from there. Um, and. Uh, that's all going to be on the first floor, and then you're also going to have your public works office there, your zoning office, you're going to have um, your treasurer, your borough manager, and uh, pretty much every function that's at Borough Hall is going to be the, located there, plus um, the building for the ambulance and fire. So now, that yellow part is the first phase, phase one. The second floor, I mentioned that there's two floors. Oh, 
Well, actually, this, you're not going to be able to see the details, but I'll let you look at this later. These are the um, actual places. So when you come in the lobby here, the tax collect ambulance billings on the left, tax collectors over here, treasurer, borough manager's office, there's storage, there's going to be public restrooms there. So if you're walking the trail up on um, South Mountain and you have to go to the bathroom, there's a public restroom you can use while the borough hall's open. Um, then you have the zoning office over here and public works. So they're all going to be located in here. Um, the second floor, like I was saying, this is also part of phase one. This will be the new council chambers. There's elevators in the building. And um, it will be about the same size as our, our current um, council chambers. Uh, so that's pretty much it for that. And then one other part of the phase will be that building that I said were to, what's currently the borough gym is going to be moved into the new building. And that's going to be on the left side of where the um, entrances to the administration part. So that's phase one. After phase one, what will happen is we'll sell Burl Hall, which there's multiple people already inquiring about it, um, which obviously I can't discuss, but uh, there's definitely a demand for it. And um, <clears throat> the after we receive the funds from that building, the building that's at Lions Playground and the money for, from the sale of the property on 2nd South Street, that will fund phase two of the project. Phase two, the first phase, by the way, the estimated goal of getting Burl Hall in there is gonna be to get them in pro, um, near the end of the first quarter of 2017. The, um, Public Works Department is going to do a lot of the work. So the actual numbers that they, they um, the architect projected for the cost is not very accurate as, as far as what it's going to cost us because we're doing a lot of the work. We have certified pl master plumber, we have a master electrician, we have a lot of talent on our public works that are going to do a lot of the in-house, a lot of the work in-house. and. Um, when they did the, how much it's going to cost for each phase, they have to use what's called prevailing wage rates, which is outrageous wages. And um, I'm sure you're familiar with that being the taxpayers group. Well, they're, they're not going to be paid out if our public works is doing a lot of the work. So we can knock walls out. We can do... Uh, ceilings, we can do electrical work, we can do plumbing work, so a lot of that's going to be done in-house, save us a lot of money. Um, phase two is going to incorporate one of the things we have to do is put a there, even though there's two stair current, current um, stairwells, there's one here and there's one over here. Even though we have two stairwells and an elevator, we still have to build another stairwell, which is going to be on the outside of the middle building. And it's quite a cost that was added. They're estimating maybe 100000 just for the steps, but that, that's not set in stone. It depends what, what design, and we could lower that cost. But part of phase two is going to do uh, finish the rest of the second floor, which most of that is going to be storage, and these are going to be conference rooms. The, these conference rooms are going to have dividing doors where they can be opened up for um, events or affairs for the borough. The uh, Arts Commission in the borough has been very active, and they can hold, um, I don't know, they can ha have their um, art shows or um, have events there that it's just a, a, an appropriate space for them to be able to use. Um, that's part of the phase two. That's estimated to be from year two, year well, the end of year one to year three. So somewhere in that second to third year is estimated to have that phase done. That phase is not 
not very expensive other than the stairwell, because a lot of the work is gonna be, once again, done by Public Works. Um, part of the, that phase is adding, right now there's just grass in front of uh, that building. Well, we're gonna be putting a drive in here. There's gonna be the parking space. So there's gonna be 21 parking spaces here where people can park and then they can ride in the building. Until that happens, they'll have to park either on the street or at the Yakko's parking lot. Um, but this, this is also gonna be used for the school bus drop off when they go to school. Because currently they're all lining up on Minor Street and they come from 15 different school districts. So there's, even though it's not that big a school, there's very many buses that line up on Min Minor Street and they were backing up onto uh, what would be there. Is that second street there? Third? Second. So they were backing up and actually going around the corner causing a hazard. We, we adjusted it a little bit. We um, extended the uh, no parking during the morning and afternoon so that the buses can line up that whole street. But this will eliminate that. They can actually be dropped off in front of the building and not uh, picked up. Um, so that's going to be part of phase two. And uh, the, bur the public works is also going to do some work there. They can do retaining wall work. Uh, they can even lay the macadam for the road. Phase three is adding the ambulance and fire department. So when you're going to the compost center, that's that funky looking building that's at the very end along Klein's Lane Road there. Uh, or Klein's Lane, it's not Klein's Lane Road. And um, that's gonna be the administrative for, administration for ambulance and fire department. There's gonna be locker rooms um, and some storage there. Along with that phase will be along the back of the building or the railroad track side. Um, these will be the garage. The, we have to build a garage for the ambulance and the fire department. Um, there'll be all the storage for their gear there. And after they move in, the central fire hall and ambulance uh, department, will, that building will be sold. Um, once again, we already have people inquiring about that, multiple people, and um, we're excited about it, but unfortunately I'm not able to tell you about it, but there are businesses that are definitely interested in that. Um, then the last, uh, the estimate for that would be anywhere from three to six years. And then um, the last phase would be the police department. Um, I should show you on the first page or the, so this back to the first page. So here's the administration where the two, two floors are. Over here would be the, the building where the uh, fire department and the, emer the um, ambulance corps would be. And then the garage for the ambulance and fire would be here along the administration building. All right. The last phase would be the police department. They would continue this garage all the way along. So it would be, this one's actually going to be separated, but um, the whole back of the building would be garage. And um, that's going to be, that's going to consist of the whole police department. And then the, this, green spot here is where the seventh generations wants to expand to. Um, I don't know if you've been following the issue, and then here's the Burl Gym. Um, they're going to be closing their middle school down because of issues they've been, been having. What happens is the kids that are going through the whole program, so from kindergarten all the way through fifth grade, um, they're going to middle schools whether it's Emmaus or wherever, what school district are coming from, because they want to participate in the band or theater or um, sports. So they're not going all the way through eighth grade, but because they expanded the middle school to, to go sixth, seventh, and eighth, we're getting all these students from Allentown. And um, over half of those students are from Allentown and less from Emmaus or the other districts. And there's been issues um, 
So what they plan on doing is closing the middle school, but they want to expand the elementary. And that article in the, the articles in the morning call have failed to, to mention that. But they have a huge demand where they're turning people away at the elementary level. So that's what they want to expand. They want to just stick to the, um, the elementary level and maybe add a class at each level. So that's why they need the expansion. Um, I just want to show you some of the designs that they were looking at. So this is an overview of what they would look like. There's bigger, bigger photos of it. This is a photo from behind looking from the railroad tracks. So those are basically what you would see are the garages. Is it clear? It's clear? Yeah. All right. This is just another angle. So the red is actually the fire and ambulance, and the white building over here and the gray is the police. Now here's a closer look at the, so this is the fire. So all our fire trucks and ambulances will be able to fit in there. And uh, our, new, our new fire, our, um, our safe, safety director, um, thinks that we can combine two pieces of equipment and I'll actually eliminate one truck, but that hasn't, been, that hasn't been discussed yet other than him mentioning it. And then this is the police. So there's enough to fit all the police cars in. Um, also the equipment that they use. How many police cars are there? <sighs> well, we downsize a little bit because we have the motorcycle now, but um, I want to say 12, but don't hold me to that. I'm not, I'm not positive on how many cars we have. I can tell you I know there's 18 spaces, but I know we don't have 18 cars. Here's an overhead view of it. Pretty much it. Um, yes. Um, well, I, I did want to say also, we're going through a transition right now with, um, as you know, our we had some um, retirements. Um, Sergeant Gushwin retired, and also Chief Faust retired. And um, I just wanted to give you some timelines on the hiring process and where we're going with that. Um, so we are three police officers short right now because of retirements. And um, we are going through the civil service process right now. And the estimated um, hiring date for new officers is August 15th. So that's after they get their physicals, their backgrounds. and and uh, interviews and polygraph and all the things that you need to do to make sure you're getting top-notch people. Um, because we had retirements, um, we have to restructure our whole uh, police department. So we need to promote people to sergeant, promote people to corporal, because we have so many down at the lower level, we, didn't, we need more in the leadership roles. So, um, so we have, Sergeant promotion process timeline, where we're going to be promoting three, and um, the estimated time for that is sometime after June. Uh, police chief hiring timeline, we hope to have, well, first of all, we hope to hire from in-house. We, we plan on hiring somebody from in-house. That is, if they're 
willing to bid on the job and, and want to take that responsibility. But from what I understand, there are one, if not two, that are interested. So that's that's good to know. We're not going to have some outsider coming in, which I would oppose to. I would be opposed to that. I'd rather have somebody that knows this borough in town. Um, looking at when we would hire that, that would be after August 15th also. Actually, in August, it looks like. We also had our animal control officer retire, and he's been doing that for 20 years. And um, we're, we had just one paragraph of a job description for him. Basically, it said you catch dogs and cats, but uh, animal control officer is much more involved in that, so they're making up a, um, um, a job description, and then they'll follow through with the process of hiring that out. And then um, also the corpor corporals, promoting them, we want to, um, looks like that, that, that's not gonna happen till the end of the year, like maybe December. So, just wanted to give you kind of a heads up on that. Um, I don't know if you know, we um, hired a public safety director. He's gonna, he's the department head for ambulance and fire chief. We saved the borough some money there because instead of paying uh, two department heads with you know salary and benefits and everything, you know around eighty thousand dollars. That's including the, the benefits too. Um, we now have one one in charge of both departments, and he is both trained in, in the ambulance and and also fire. So he he has the proper training. So with that, I'll open it up to questions. Uh, if I could. Just ask if we could use the microphone. Somebody would. And if, I mean, it doesn't have to be a question about the move into the building. If you have any other questions about Burrell Hall or, or things going on in the borough. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Ah, okay. Since you want to put all the bathrooms down in the new building, what are the people downtown going to do? Piss on the side streets? Well, there's not many people that go in there anyhow. We, uh, there's not many that go in there. We, we actually keep track of how many people use the bathrooms because, as you know, they're up on the second floor. And, um, yeah. Right. No, I'm not saying they don't get used, but there's not many because we found out that the biggest time they get used is when the bills are being paid, basically. We don't really have people that come off the street that use it. So, I'm not saying that doesn't happen, but it's, it's not a lot. Now, how's the uh, fire equipment gonna go across the railroad track? It, well, it'll only happen if there's no um, train, obviously, but, okay, so, where to, where to decide where the compost center is, along the railroad tracks. It comes out over, um, what is Dalton Avenue, which everyone refers to as Mayus Avenue. So you have the train underpass that goes down to the light where uh, Superior Diner is. Right. We would build an emergency access right there. It'd actually be a lot faster to get to um, this dryer section. An overpass there. Excuse me? You would have the railroad going across and the track. No, it's going to go parallel to the railroad and come out onto Emmaus Avenue. It won't even cross the railroad. And if they have to go... No, no, that's what I meant. You're going to make an opening there. Yes. In other words, okay, I follow you now. You're going to go right along and go up, uh, 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 on the other side of the underpass. The same gonna... side as where the new building is. Right. Just beyond, on the other side of the road. We'll put an access road that goes along the railroad and it comes right out on Emmaus Avenue. Next question I got. And then just so you know, and a lot of people don't know this, we actually measured how far it is from 6th Street to the 4th Street Bridge and from the minor street, um, from the Rodale building to there. It's only a difference of 400 feet. That's it. 400 feet is the difference between going to 6th Street and that 4th Street Bridge and the new Rodale building. So it's not as much as people think it is. 
well. It is on the other side of town, yes. Right, but it takes longer to get to... Well, right now, the Stryer section takes longer to get to from where they're at now. Then if they can just shoot across the access road and go right to the Stryer section. Yes? Basically, you're saying that you can buy enough Can we use the microphone? So you're saying that you would use Minor Street as access going the other direction unless the railroad was in use? Correct. Okay, what if the school's open? Well, then, the, you know, listen, none of this is going to be done Sounds just like willy a dangerous game. No, you got to understand, this isn't just going to be done. This is going to be all planned before we even move in there. There's going to be committees that do this. Every scenario that you're bringing up is going to be addressed. It's not going to just be go there and I say, oh, what do we do for this now? It's all going to be addressed. Um, part of the reason why we're building that entrance, in, or the drive in front of the building is for that reason. Because those school buses are going to be in there now and not on the road. So that's part of the reason why they, that we're doing that. I agree that that makes sense going going that route. However, you will recall about a year ago I took to the podium and asked that question, are you going to plan to take a road through there? Because I heard that was the rumor. And I was told no. But then the borough manager was here last fall and he did say then that you were considering doing that. So when was that decision? I don't remember anyone saying no. I never, heard, I never remember hearing yeah. that. She was there. No, no, I'm not saying it then, but I don't remember that. The whole council told me no. <laughs> not the whole council. I didn't, well, because it was my idea to put the access road in. Okay. Anyway, uh, I believe I read in the paper that the, the uh, phases that you talked about are supposed to take 10 years, thereabouts. We're not going to do it. Yeah, you're right. Okay. And I believe I read in the paper also that you've, you've said or somebody said representing the borough that uh, that we don't expect any tax increases as a result of this we are resolved to do this without increasing taxes correct okay now my next question and it's really related if we look at the streets in the borough we'll see that it's crumbling and that last fall the borough manager was here and he told us yes that's an infrastructure problem that the borough has and we're going to have to spend money on that uh, are we going to fix the streets without raising taxes? I, I guess. I don't know. You can't promise that. Yeah. I would but, never but, promise I, I guess, anything. I guess my follow-up on that, Brent, and I'm, I'm not trying to be antagonistic here. I'm just raising the question. You know, if, if the borough had spent money upgrading the facilities it currently had, what well, would happen? Yeah. Then you know the. I, I mean, I, I believe the latest press report that I read that you guys released was 4.8 million now, uh, an estimated cost. And obviously it's going to go the road, the road through the uh, compost area to get to Dalton Street. It's not going to be cheap to handle fire trucks. So uh, the bottom line here is we're talking many millions of dollars that maybe could have been better spent on the streets. But you know that's a question I have. Well, first of all, that's why we're not committed to a timeline if it takes 15 years, fine, but nobody's talking about 15 years, just so you don't go running with that. Um, but if that's what it takes, we're not going to raise taxes on that. Streets, everybody has the street issues, but we are addressing that. We have, um, we have a, a plan. It's in place where the streets that are in mo the most deplorable condition and the most heavily used are going to always get addressed first. And there is an intention to do more paving next year, so, so you know. Um, part of that got pulled back of, because of that culvert and other issues that came up. Now, if, when Shane became our borough manager, when he first came here, our, our budget was in dire straits. I think we carried $50,000 over, that was it. And each year it's gotten better and better because of his his leadership and, and count decisions that council has made. Um, so we're getting to the point where we're starting to put more and more money away for if there's emergencies. 
Um, obviously, you know, you want that reserve if you can. And um, also, the bonds that we have are going to be paid off in six and a half, seven years at the most. That's $550,000 freed up right there that can do uh, a lot of things that this borough has ne neglected, not because they wanted to, because you have choices to make. Oh, you've been there, you know, you know if you're gonna do the streets, you're taking from somewhere else probably, realistically. And, and part of those things that we did was um, we weren't replacing equipment. So that's why we're buying dump trucks now and, and things like that. We have dump trucks that are from 1990, that was the last one we got rid of. So, so we're, we're, getting, we're getting our equipment to where it needs to be. And um, some of the things, one of the things, one of the things we bought is this machine that our public works, it, it hooks onto a, a back of a, a, a truck and they can go right up and fill any pothole. And it's not the stuff that you run over with the roller and, and what they call a cold, cold patch, which doesn't last very long. It's, it's what like the state uses, where it fills it in with that, looks like that smooth stuff that will last like five, 10 years, and it, it will bond the street and protect the street better. So we did get that equipment, and that, they're able to do so much of the burrow on one day where with the cold patching, it was a project, and there was a three-man crew that had to go do that. With this project, they can do it with a two-man crew and do even more. So we are buying equipment that's making us more efficient, but it takes time to get to that point. So. I have a question, and uh, I travel it every Wednesday or Thursday and also Sunday. I come through the back way and I go up 3rd Street by the funeral parlor on, on the Main Street. Mm -hmm. When is somebody that is in power, or the council, is somebody going to take a look at Main Street on a Sunday with the farmer's market? Somebody's going to get killed. What are you suggesting? A cop up there. A cop up there to tell the people not to cross in the middle of the street. They walk any place from the funeral market all the way down to the restaurant. They just cross any place in the street. That's a police issue, and the council well, has. Well, I'm bringing up. You're on the council, aren't you? Yeah, but council is not in charge of the police. Otto will tell I'm you that the mayor. Is that... You can bring it up to the chief or whatever it is. Say we better take a well, look that, at it. Those issues have been brought up. Trust me. But Otto will tell you that we are not in charge of the police department. That's the mayor's responsibility. And if people, citizens, have complaints, they need to go to him. They really do because. Well, I don't live in a mess, but I'm, I'm concerned. You got kids running across the street there. Hey, I live here, I go there, I drive through there after church, I see it. Um, and you're not gonna change people, you're not gonna change people from doing that. But that's what the cops are there for. If they should have, if they had a cop up there for a half an hour or three or four times a day and tell the kids not to cross, it always takes somebody getting killed or something happened before they do something about it. I'm bringing up something that I see every Sunday. It's like a madhouse up there. Okay, I'll tell. I'll and tell who's in? Who's responsible? The, the city mayor. is allowing them. The, the mayor is allowing them to the get the mayor. There. Okay, you're on the council. Tell the mayor that somebody's brought it up. I will do that. And also, you're talking about Amaze Avenue, the uh, the bridge, the train goes over top. Have somebody go up there with some experience to find out. Right hand turn on red. Who is that for? Because the people going up through Main Street can see it, and the people coming down by the library can see it. Who is it for? Well, first of all, that's a PennDOT road. It's not an issue for the borough, but... It doesn't matter who it is. Somebody should be brought well, it does up. matter who it is. You can't call PennDOT, or somebody can't call PennDOT and say, put the sign up or fix it? Are you here to berate me? No. I, I'm here to get a, an answer from you instead of avoiding everything I'm asking. I'm not avoiding it. Yes, you are. You say you're not responsible. That doesn't mean no, you can't I'm, call I'm, somebody. All you have to do is pick up the telephone and call somebody and say, how about checking this out? Okay. You can do that as a citizen, too. Forget about it. I'm not saying I'm not going to, but I'm saying, do you not think it's more important? I'm not a citizen of a mayor. So you don't I'm have to be. There. You don't have to be. Oh, I know. They listen to me like you're listening to me. Excuse me. As a former council president, 
mean, I, I didn't come here to defend our speaker, but in this case, I, have, I must. I've been there. Believe me, if the council wants something done with the police department and the police chief and the police department doesn't want to do it, <laughs> good luck getting it done. There is talk about budgeting more money for the uh, downtown officer being there for the farmer's market. But that is a budget issue and whether the police department wants to do it or not. So it is at that stage, but that wouldn't be till next year. Oh, wait, wait. Somebody else has a question. That's okay. Um, I was just wondering, you probably don't know Public Works, but if you're, if, if Public Works people are going to be pulled to do the project, mm -hmm. who is doing their job? Well, they're going to be doing both. Overtime? <laughs> no, no. This will be during regular clock. They'll be, they'll be doing shifts. Uh, I'll give you an example. Okay, we had a grant, or the library had a grant to convert all their lighting into um, whatever the most efficient lighting is now. Yeah, so there was a grant from PPL to com com convert that, and our borough employees did all that. Now, they didn't do it all in one week, they did it over like a two week span. So when, let's say, as an example, it's a rainy day and they can't do X work because it's raining that day. That's when they go in there and they did that work. So they, they just schedule around what they need to. Now, obviously, if there's buildings or something that need to be addressed, that's going to be a priority before the borough, the new borough hall. So the regular business of the borough is going to come first. That's going to be after the fact. I have a question. Since you said all these people are retiring and we need all these things and it's going to take to August, who's running the police department? Uh, we have an interim chief and it's uh, uh, Chuck Palmer. He's, he's highly qualified to do it. But I just was wondering. There's just certain things he can't do being um, part of the union. So the mayor, if there's, as an example, he can't discipline officers. The mayor has to discipline off, uh, an officer in a police department. But other than that, uh, the structure is the same, just minus we're short staff. That's, but the structure is the same. I, the reason I have a question about that, and you said we have X amount of police. I used to do visiting nursing. And I was on call, and I was around this borough at nighttime. I never saw the police. And I was on call. And I've been on all the streets around here <laughs> and that with it. And what I have observed is, you have kids running around at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. I think they need to do something with the night shift. And I totally agree with the farmer's market. I mean, kids are all over the place here. And they're not... Whatever they need to do, it's not being done. Uh, the crime rate in Emmaus is going up. And granted, it's going around every place in that stuff. But if we have all these people, then it shouldn't be going up at the rate it's going up. Well, actually, last year, according to our annual report, last year, the crime rate went down. Well, in the borough. That. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's not a lot, but at least it went yeah. down. It didn't go the other way. It didn't go the other way, so. My other concern is when I looked at your drawings for the town hall, I'd like to know when this whole process started because I wasn't even aware of it. And I try to follow it like on when you're having your council meetings on TV, which that's a hit and miss subject. <laughs> There should be you know, a schedule. It's, it's, just so you know, it's online. You can go anytime and watch it online. I know that. Oh. It's, it's beyond, you know, you have your council meeting and until they get the, the notes on that stuff on. It's on the next day. Oh, okay. well, it wasn't uh, the times I was looking at it and that stuff with it. But I do have concern about that drawing and having the way it is and you have the police force and you have this driveway coming in unloading school buses. Right, so the police... That is not a good idea. The police, I'll, I'll address that. The police yes. and all the emergency personnel are on a drive that's all on the north side of the building. All the school stuff is on the, on the south side. Because I had where I live. And you have to understand also, the, the police, the police is not, it's not as much an issue. The police are already out on the road. The only time really they come back is to 
change shifts. It's the fire and the ambulance yeah. you have to worry about because they're coming out and going out. The police are already out there. I was looking at the fact that the jail is there too. You talk about putting juveniles and you talk about putting adults. I mean, if we have a problem in the jail, it's going to be there. Who knows if it's going to be when a bus appears on the scene. My problem is, and I, I've had problems with the school buses for years, and when you said, call the mayor, call the, all the places, I called the mayor, I called the town hall, I called the school bus thing, and it was never resolved. What, what was the issue? <sighs> it stopped in front of my house, my house got ruined, I got windows broken, things around, the kids are fighting on buses. Now they move, they finally, after about 10 years, have moved part of the bus route. But now they're dropping them off in front of a bar room and everything else. That is an issue with it. And I asked all these people and nothing was ever done. So I, my thing is too, is town council, and I'm not that great at this because I just retired, I didn't have time really to really get involved. I think town council needs to be a lot more transparent in what they're doing and how it's coming about. I watched those council meetings on TV and quite frankly, I found some people on town council really rude to people like these people are asking questions and they're absolutely not open to them. And yet we're paying the bill for all this. I, I won't disagree with the rudeness and I, I know who some of them are. Um, we address that when we can, but um, one of them is no longer on council, so that, that's a little bit of a help. Because I feel, I feel this way. When this was all started, I didn't know anything about this until it hit the paper. Oh, you probably want the microphone. <laughs> Over there, is the uh, gym going to be open to citizens at all, or is that only for employees? I, I don't know at this point. To answer your question about the school, yeah. I drive a school bus. I'll tell you who does make out the orders. The school. Nobody else. Is that who it is? The school board sets up and the school follows it and they tell them where to park. They tell you where to drive. They tell you how many kids to pick up. They have everything laid out beforehand. I contacted the, the bus company. They're not in charge. They yeah, just they take do. the rules from the school. Well, I contacted them all too. The and, that, and they didn't do anything. Who in the, who in the school is running? Superintendent. Superintendent. I think. And, and his cronies. Whatever he assigned him to. Yeah. Brent, if you remember when, uh, when you were doing this as far as letting people know, there was one meeting and I attended a lot of them. And I distinctly remember that you even asked, are we gonna make an announcement about the special meeting? Yeah, you know why I did that, right? Because nobody else did. Right. And it was the next week. And I was the one that did that, correct. And that was just by happenstance. And then nothing got out, really. But this whole process didn't happen overnight. The, um, the actual meetings, meeting with the architects, um, the committee, the, the, sub, the committee structure, that happened over a whole year. It's not like it, we just put this together in, in one month. This, this happened over a long period of time. But um, we did do press releases, just so you know. When you do a press release, you can't, you can't force the newspaper to, to publish it. Um, the East Penn Press, I believe, might have put an article in, but I don't remember. Yes. And if you remember again when that meeting was held, it was pretty packed. Right. You we were allowed one round of questionings. It was an hour. There was and then Leanne shut it down. So this woman's question as far as transparency is 100% correct. That is so closed. I have asked you constantly, put those committee meetings up on the net too. That's where the meat is. There you're talking. This has been going on for a long time, but when does the public find out? When it's already ran through. John, that, you know we don't run, ran through. Yes, you do. 
I know well, I'm very well. You. We don't ram it. Very anything. well. I just want to say that, uh, first of all, you're the new council, you've been on council for 18 years, but you're the new council president. And believe me, I feel for you because you've got a tough job. You're going to take a lot of heat from people for things that maybe is not your fault. For example, that meeting that John was just talking about, that Leanne shut it down. I mean, uh, I think if it was better publicized or if they had extended it a little longer, you would have had more public there asking more questions. And sometimes the public can give you a good idea. I can tell you, I can tell you, Otto, we had seven people speak. Seven, that was it. And, and then six of them were, six of them were specifically about the emergency access in the railroad. That, that's what almost everyone in that room was concerned about. And then and there was one person that really wasn't against it, he wasn't for it, but he wasn't against it. And nobody spoke up and said, I'm against it. If you go back and watch it, there was nobody that said, I'm against this happening. Every one of them was specifically about that concern with the but emergency Brian, personnel. Most of those people were hearing it for the first time. They were just getting their information. They haven't had time to formulate ideas on this. And, and, and the thing is, the one round of questions, I remember specifically, I wasn't there, but I watched it on the, on the, on the video. This one gentleman got up and he said, may I ask another question? The Lee Ann shut him down. Right there. I mean, that was throwing cold water on the public, telling the public whether you realize it or not. The public uh, was was told basically we're not interested in what you got to say, and then you voted right after that. So, I, but I'm not, I'm I not might, throwing stones at you. Say, I might say that maybe that might be part of the reason why I'm president now. Welcome, Good luck. Welcome to the hot seat. <laughs> I'm saying might be, might be. The reason. I'm not saying that's the reason. But. Brent, I'm curious about the inquiries about the buildings. I realize you can't say to people, but are they within the present zoning or would they have to be pro zoning changes? I don't know. I'm not, I, I don't know all this. Okay. No. Well, the police department building. But if, if, if it's not, they'll have to go through the process just like anyone else. So, I mean, it's, there's a process they have to go through. Mm -hmm. And where the fire hall is, they can't do anything with Lions Field, right? That's dedicated. No, that's, that's, no it's just specifically that. Yeah, okay. The central fire hall. So will the police building, the building that the police are in now, will that be paid off by the time they move? That was paid off this year or last year. Okay, so that's recent. done. Yes. Okay. Um, they might be there another 10 years. Um, one of the things I didn't say, a couple of things. First of all, I don't think anyone's aware of this because it, I don't think it was in a newspaper, but before we purchased that Rodale building, Rodale put a brand new roof on the whole thing. Brand new. So that's one thing we won't have to worry about for, I would say, 20 years probably. So that's a huge thing that we got from Rodale. A roof for that size building was huge. I, I don't remember what the cost was, but I, think, I, I know it was hundreds of thousands of dollars. It was, yeah, I think it was close to half a million. So that was huge. Um, we didn't do this willy nilly. All these things in the Burrow Hall that would need fixing, um, the heating unit, the cooling unit, the roof, which we did part of it, but not all of it. All those issues that we would have to do, hundreds of thousands of dollars, and, and that was all factored in. The police, from the time that the police station was originally built to now, the laws have changed with how, what you have to keep with regards to the law as far as records and what you have to keep as far as evidence and how long you have to keep it. That changed since we built Thurl Hall, or the police station. And they're running out of room. I mean, they're literally running out of room. And that's, that factored into why, why we have to go to where we're going, because they need the space. And it's not because we didn't prepare for that is because, as you know, government regulation makes things hard on everybody, including government ent entities. And, um, you know, for them to be there another 10 years, 
we'll probably have to do things as far as storage and stuff and make, we'll probably have to put money into um, having them be able to store what they have in the space that they have. So. Go ahead. Does it always have to be um, stored on site, or can you rent space somewhere else? Like it does. Not, a, not only does it have to be stored on site, but it also has to be climate controlled. So now you have to have climate controlled spaces to put it in. Not to hog it, but the third um, stairway, why is that? Like a safety? You know, we thought it was because we put the council chambers up top, but it's, it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with square footage. The, the law changed on that, too. And I, I can't give you uh, an answer that... Well, it's not even... Well, I guess it is tied in the zoning, but... Um, they go by square footage now, which I didn't know until we went through this process. Um, you would think it would go by how many occupants are going to be in the building at any given time, but it's tied to square footage now. It, it, even the bathrooms and stuff um, are tied to that. Yes, yes. And once again, that's government regulation telling us what we have to do. I have a question about paying your bills online. Is, is there a timetable for it being computerized? Um, in, in what way? Receiving a bill? Well, you could receive it and you could also pay it. So that the intention and the goal of the borough is eventually if people want to sign up to receive their bill online, they can receive it online. So then we don't have to mail it out. So that's going to save the borough money. Um, as far as paying it online, I believe we're, we're doing it now. I, I eventually you're going to be able to pay. Like if you want to get a pool pass, you can use a credit card for it. Pretty much anything in the borough, you'll be able to use a credit card. It took so long because there's a lot of companies out there and you also, you're not, you're not allowed to charge fees for certain bills. And maybe you know this, maybe you don't. For utility bills, they're not allowed to charge um, a fee, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so like your, like your water bill, I don't think. So, so when, when we take a credit card for that, you have to figure out where's that money coming from. Do you, do you eat that, that charge that you have to pay for it? So those are things that are being, you know, those are all things that you have to figure out before you go and do these things. Uh, what we did was, because they're paying online and we're not gonna be mailing bills out in the postage, um, we thought there was a, gonna be a trade-off there where hopefully it balances out. But until you do it the first year, and even the first year is probably not the, the good way to look at it. Um, the second year, because till people find out about it and learn how to do it, um, the second year will probably be a better judge of how, how we, you know, are those equaling out the cost versus the savings. But it is a convenience. It is a convenience, and there's people that may not have cash and they can put it on a credit card for one month or two months until they, you know, get over the hump. So it does help people. Yes. Uh, hold on. Additional space for the police department. Now you said that there's people interested in the current Pearl Hall, but yes. didn't maybe wait actually all three. Uh, actually, all three properties: the, the police right. department, Pearl Hall, and the but fire the, station. I mean, being that they're going to stay there up to another ten years and they're going to need additional space, did you ever consider reusing part of Pearl Hall where they used to be? and leasing the rest out versus the cost of um, relocating I don't, stuff somewhere else. I don't think that's the intention because um, the, whole, the whole goal was to each selling of the building phases of the next, uh, funds the next phase of the, of the project of the new borough. Versus funds that you're gonna have to put out to put the police equipment elsewhere. Well, it's just one specific issue, it's not no like, no. I just want. And we know the, the We're options, not talking. So, just so you know, you we're know, not talking a hundred thousand dollars. We're talking maybe to expand the storage. We're talking like fifteen thousand dollars. It's not like we're talking hundreds of knocking walls out or anything like that. We're talking like it's an actual storage system with racks and they roll around and, and all that. So um, it's it's not like we're talking a hundred. It's like I think it's fifteen or twenty thousand dollars, and it's been actually in the budget for the last two years and we cut it out, but it's getting to the point where when we're told we have no more room to go, then we have to address it.
And you know what, while we're talking here, I, I wanna, you guys can look at this, because when the meeting's over, you're not all gonna get to look at it. I have a unrelated question to that. Can you uh, tell us what the procedure is if somebody got a compost bill, but they didn't get the, the new pass? For compost what is what's the procedure to get it it would just be a call to borough hall they will they'll provide one for you just call or, yeah. go, or go in yeah or go in yeah yeah okay. uh, yeah they'll give you one okay thank you i would imagine they'll ask you for an id to show that you're in the borough i mean they don't want to give that to anybody and as you know they don't always check but they do they do spot check i've been checked myself already so i i do know they spot check Brent, this a uh, couple of questions on as far as the cost and things like that. As uh, Otto made mention, the roads need a lot of work, and of course the sewage and infill, you know, infiltration lines and everything that tons of work that has to go on, which I guess you're studying as far as. Oh, we've we been addressing that. that for ten years now. Is the Harrison and uh, and uh, by the high school that corner that was always backing up that actually had the. Sewage line that was down has that been fixed? I'm not sure, John. Okay, I, I, that, I, I, that cost us. You're a talking lot about of that one home, that one home that backs up. Yeah, yeah. Not, but I, the borough had to fix. I, twice. Actually, I, I don't think that was addressed yet. Okay, that's there's money, all the roads, uh, construction, and I'm looking at the different handouts that you had as far as that meeting. We're only talking like a million or so dollars to fix up what we have. Of what? The fire, ambulance, police opening up that in the borough hall to stay right where it is. And use that money to fix infrastructure. We don't need to create more infrastructure that we're gonna have to repair down the line, plus everything else that needs taken care of. The culvert down at 10th Street, there's like unlimited things that need fixed. So always. Never you don't somebody. think it's a better idea to just fix those things first? Those things are being addressed, John. Uh, they've been being addressed for at least five years that I know of. Well, the culvert's being addressed. When's that going to be? We had to wait for the grant money, John. It wasn't pa it, the grant money wasn't passed on to us because of the state budget. As you know, there was a state budget that was held up for a year, and that was tied up with the state budget. And how long is that bridge needing help? I mean, how? Yeah. Ten years at least. Well, I don't think it's 10 years, but... At least 10 years. John, again, the John, cost, I'm not, I'm the not cost gonna, of these. I'm, I'm not just gonna, bringing things up, and I'm asking you to address I'm, that. I'm just going to say, I, we have a difference in an in, in a opinion here. I mean, you're saying we shouldn't move into a centralized location where everything will be there. Our bills are going to go down for utilities because Rodale is... As you know, Rodale is an energy-efficient company because they're, they're you know, cons conservation and uh, our, our bills are gonna be reduced greatly when we move in there. Efficiency, efficiency is gonna be much better. Everything will be located. It's gonna be like a compound with public works. You got the, uh, the public works buildings right there. You also have the compost center. Everything will be centrally located. Um, would we want everything downtown? Yeah, if we could, but this is an old town. There's nowhere to go. Um, I'm not disagreeing with you to take a million dollars to fix everything, but John, you're forgetting one thing. We're funding this through the selling of the, of the buildings that um, the buildings that we currently own. And we also are gonna get $200,000 a year in leasing money that pays for that building. You're not gonna have any income if you spend a, hundred, a million dollars. Where's that million dollars coming from? You're gonna have to borrow money for a, a million dollars. We don't wanna borrow any more money. We're in, the, we're in the direction of paying off our money uh, that we owe by, I think, 2023. So um, I, I don't know many municipalities that can say they're debt-free, and we're gonna be debt-free in eight years, seven years, I said. Yeah, and where'd that debt come from? Yeah, exactly, and I voted, against, I voted against that, John. One block. And a fire. And the people were you against don't forget, that totally. John, you can't just say that. You can't forget there was a $500,000 ladder truck that we bought, too, all right, that you're, forced to purchase. You have to have that. Well, thank God for Pepe that way. He saved us. But again, 
you got all these costs, your infrastructures that you need to fix, and you're going to do it all, and you're going to use the personnel that you have now. You're not going to hire any more, I take it, to do all this work over 10 years where you're going to have we, to fix the buildings in the meantime. We just hired somebody. We hired another person, Public Works. All right. I don't know if you have the answer to this off the top of your head, but when Rodale was there, they were paying taxes, and now the borough owns the property, it goes off the tax rolls. Right. How much money did we lose? And you know what, I asked the same question when it happened, and I, I don't recall what it is. Um, Seems like it but, would be significant. But when the other buildings are sold, sold they go on the tax rolls then, so we Oh yeah, once they're sold, they right. go on the tax rolls, that's true. So there, there is a transition, yes, you're right. But, I looked that up, it was 65000 Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. And that's between the three municipalities, which obviously one would go to ourselves. Yeah. So I know I asked this at that point. But uh, one other thing, though, when, we, when it sold the building, the real estate tax that was paid, that came back to the borough, too, because we get the real estate tax is 1%, and we get a half percent of that of the purchase. So we did get money back from that that kind of countered the tax money that we didn't, didn't receive. What was I going to say? Sorry. Oh, at that meeting I asked, oh, about, I wish you could say, who the entities are. Are they profit, like tax-paying uh, entities, or I are know. they going to be non-profits and we're not going to make anything anyway? I can't really say any of that. And I don't, to be honest with you, I don't know a couple of them myself, but I just know that the inquiries were made. Anyone else have a question? But you know, the more people that are interested in it, the better for us. So that's that's a good thing. <laughs> that it? Yes. Um, Julie, thank you very much, friends. You're welcome. Um, very informative. You want to take us back? And I, I just want to say, as far as the budget. The last three years, the earned income tax has been going up, thank God, because you can't do anything if the revenue's not coming in. The business privilege tax has gone up, and part of that is because of um, our staff finding um, businesses that were rep reporting um, that they were a business, so that was our staff. And um, also, the home values are going up a little bit more now. So when the homes are sold, you get a little more real estate tax. So that, that's been going up too. So all these things, they're still not where they used to be, but maybe we can get a new president in soon and uh, get the economy going. I know I, took, I know I took a pay cut where I work. I had to take a pay cut, 5% pay cut, and they jumped my insurance up from 20% to 24% and they're kicking spouses off my insurance. So now my wife has to get insurance and we got paid for her insurance. So I got the triple whammy. My, my family income went down $300 a month. So you don't have to tell me about where the economy is going right now. And that's with three kids in school. That's exactly what I wanted to hear the first year that all three of them were in there. That's a lot of it, but government regulation too. What, if, what would happen to the borough if, would it matter if we are successful in getting the property tax eliminated? What would happen to the borough? So you... I don't know, well, I don't know enough of the details, but I'm assuming we would get money from the state, but I... Does it really include that? It's just the school. So it's state income, and that would fund the school districts. Yeah. yeah. But, Lynn, Lynn, as you know, this, the school district tax is the one that kills everyone. It's not the borough and the county. They're usually pretty steady. Yeah, in answer to that, the, the IFO report, and Rich can verify this, he's been involved in it, uh, indicates that if 76 passed, within a couple of years, they would have major surpluses that they could be lowering our taxes. 
but the 76 involves the elimination of school real estate taxes. Real estate taxes for the other entities would have to be addressed sometime down the road. Yeah, I'll, be, I'll keep waiting for them to cut. By the way, <laughs> I, there is a petition back there. If you haven't seen it, it's urging both senators and the House in Pennsylvania to, again, have a revote on 76. So if you're interested in saving your school property taxes, there's a petition back there that'll go to the leadership of both the House and the Senate. All right, thanks again. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.